If this is what you call kufr, I'm the worst of the kufar. There's nothing that they're saying against Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salam that the kufar of Makkah didn't say against the Holy Prophet yeah. sallallahu alayhi When he claimed to be a prophet of Allah the Almighty, did he gain vast lands? Did he gain some kind of huge wealth? He lost everything. At that time, many of the Muslims were converted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. There was no one to defend Islam. Someone stands there and says that, That I will cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. From Kadian, the message is here, and then we are privileged to be even talking about it. Can that be the saying of a liar? Oh, you poor Africans, you don't even know what he wrote. Poor <laughs> you. If he knew what he wrote, you would run out of that Jamal. <laughs> yeah. I told him, I've read every single one of his books, yeah. cover to cover in Urdu. He told us, How can Islam just be destroyed like that when I am uh, at its beginning and the Mahdi will be at its end? And he told me something that blew me away. He's like, this man is Indian? I said, yes, he is. He said, it's like you're telling me that a man from the villages of Nigeria who has not been to England or anything like that, is writing something that's better than Shakespeare. He said, if you can't convince me of that, you cannot convince me that this man is not an Arab. Then he told me I want to buy all his books. Obviously, we're members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. We hold it very dearly. Followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Qadian, proud followers, right? Like, I'll devote my life for him, but, but why? And, and the, the background to that is, this is something that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told all Muslims, and this is agreed upon, there's no doubt about it, that certain things will happen in the latter days. There will be the Imam Mahdi, and it's so important that even if you have to crawl on ice, go and say my salam to him. You find the Imam when the Muslims are lost. If you don't find the Imam, the, the Sahaba asked, what should we do if you don't find the Imam? He says, leave everything, go into the jungle and eat of the roots of trees until death overtakes you. That's better than joining any community without the Imam. So it is so important, it's such an important incident that would happen in the history of Islam. Now, we are a community that claims that that has happened. So, so this is obviously very important to us. Muslims all agreed upon this, but they still think it's yet to happen. They're waiting for a man to come down in disguise, others have given up, but why do we accept Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as the promised Messiah and that's, that's why it's so important to kind of talk about that. Actually, uh, Imam Diba Sahaba also remembered the hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of love of Islam. He told us, You know, how can Islam just be destroyed like that when I am uh, at its beginning and the Mahdi will be at its end? It means Islam is safe from its beginning and its end. It's beginning because the Holy Prophet وسلم, himself is there. Mm -hmm. And its end, it will be safe because the Mahdi will be there. And the Mahdi is referred to in the whole Quran, in Surah al Juma, as the um, coming back of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we will be having that enthusiasm or to, to, to keep Islam safe as the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. So that is the importance of the coming of Imam Mahdi. Yeah. Uh, actually, I wanted to remind uh, whoever is watching us today yeah. about the verse of the Holy Quran where Allah the Almighty says that to prove the truthfulness of a prophet, uh, there is one thing that we should all know that لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمْرًا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ That I've lived amongst you for quite a long time now. Don't you perceive, if, I, if I'm not a liar right from the beginning, how do I suddenly lie you know, about Allah the Almighty? So the promised Messiah, salatu when he was born, as we all know, he was born in India, and then he was growing up. The promised Messiah, salatu writes in his own words that he had no attachment he had no feeling for the world. He always desired to be in the mosque. And it got to a point, all the people around him started calling him Masita. That is someone who is always seen to be in the mosque, reading the Holy Quran and doing nothing else, right? And then his father actually had to force him to pick up a job in Sialkot. And the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam beautifully describes that moment of his life as prison. Right? When people actually work and they gain something, they say, okay, we are doing something good for our lives. But he calls that period a prison. He says that his main aim, his motive, that he sees that the real reason why he's in, on earth is to serve Allah the Almighty. And his life was totally devoted 
to the service of Allah the Almighty. And when he had picked a job in Seattle Court and he was still working, the Prophet Zaylin Salatu Wasalam was still debate with Christians, those who level unfounded allegations against Islam and would defend Islam even at that time when he had started, you know, learning something small, small, you know, at that time, at that very age. See, the Prophet Zaylin Salatu Wasalam said his whole life was about Allah the Almighty. And then that period of working was some kind of prison for him. That tells you that what the Holy Quran says about people who claim to be prophets, what was their life before? Mm -hmm. Were they people who were seen to be liars? Were they people who were seen to be trustworthy? And mind you, those who lived with the Prophet Alayhi mm -hmm. Salaam trusted each and every single word that he said. Mm -hmm. Everything that he did, they saw him to be someone who was trustworthy. In fact, it comes in history that the Prophet Alayhi Salaam mm -hmm. intentionally narrate some of his you know, visions that he has seen when he had not even claimed to be a prophet mm -hmm. to some of these Hindus and all these people around. And then when they will come true, say, okay, yeah, yeah, you said it before, and it mm -hmm. really came true, right? Yes. So someone who was even believed, you know, his dreams were believed by Hindus, his dreams were believed by people who were very close to him. How can such a person all of a sudden says that, okay, no, you know, I was not lying against God, uh, against God but now I want to lie against God. Mm -hmm. I am alone. But mind you, when he claimed to be a prophet of Allah the Almighty, mm -hmm. did he gain vast lands? Mm -hmm. Did he gain some kind of huge wealth? Mm -hmm. He lost everything. But he said, no, the truth must prevail. Allah the Almighty has chosen me. Mm -hmm. So this is the man that we are talking about. He is a promised Mr. Ali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Umar, sorry, Zakala for that. This makes me remind the condition of Muslims at the time the Prophet Messiah was raised. We read in history that at that time, many of the Muslims were converted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. There was no one to defend Islam. Yeah. Islam it was just Islam was weak. Yeah. And it was, there, was, there was need for someone to actually yeah. come out to support mm -hmm. and, 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 and to sort of uplift the religion of Islam. Exactly. It was at this moment that the Prophet Messiah came. Mm -hmm. In fact, people were, Muslims were just re relaxed. Yeah. No one was ever ready yeah. to come to the forefront yeah. of supporting. And, and they would come to him. Yeah, yeah. and they would and, come and, to uh, him. Yeah. So eventually, he had to take the, up the mantle exactly. and wrote several books in defense of Islam. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when his book, Brahim uh, Ahmadiyya, was first published, people marveled. In fact, yeah, Muslims, yeah. People, some people, people who later became his ardent enemies, yeah. they also testified that the fact that this book he has written is just yeah. magnificent. Yeah. But so this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself fortified him, yeah. assisted him, and in fact, he wrote books in Persia, yeah. in Farsi language. Yeah. He wrote books in Arabic language. Yeah. He wrote books in Urdu language. So if not someone, someone who, who never went to any Arabic school, yeah. but was able to wrote, write more than yeah. 20 books in Arabic language, yeah. Allah himself in one night yeah. taught him about 40,000 roots of Arabic language. Yeah. So if not a man of God, who else can do this? Exactly. You know, I was uh, talking about his Arabic. There was this... Sudanese man that came to my, uh, I was in Philadelphia as a murabbi, as an imam. Mm -hmm. He came to our masjid yeah. and we started talking. And we were talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he asked me, can I, he's a, an academic. He asked me, can I read any of his books, any of his writings? Because mm -hmm. he, he must have written something. Mm -hmm. This guy is an expert in, in Arabic. He was part of those who rewrote the constitution of Sudan. That's how great his Arabic is. Mm -hmm. So I gave him a small book of the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Arabic. The next day he came back running. And he said, who wrote this? And I told him this was written by Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of, of Qadiyan. He said, where is he from? I said, he's from India. He said, no, no, you didn't understand what I said. I mean, I mean, you know, who, who wrote it? He must have had an Arab with him that I said, no, 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 he wrote him himself. And he told me something that blew me away. He's like, this man is Indian? I said, yes, he is. He said, it's like you're telling me that a man from the villages of Nigeria who has not been to England or anything like that is writing something that's better than Shakespeare. He said, if you can't convince me of that, you cannot convince me that this man is not an Arab. He said, that's the level of his Arabic. Then he told me, I want to buy all his books. He came with a box, and he bought every single Arabic book that was there. And every Juma he started coming, and he would tell me about how great the writings are. He was just blown away. So this just tells you an outsider who's an expert in Arabic who, who saw the, the writings again, and he was just marveled by it. So again, okay. alhamdulillah, this is something that's tested. And I, I also remember, um, if we put in our mind yeah. the status of the Muslims at that time, yeah. you know, they were Muslims, yeah. but they even lost that. Yeah. They loved the Holy Prophet, yeah. but they did not know how to love him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Somebody would think that loving the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to go and cut off somebody, someone's head. That, this yeah, was what yeah, was in their yeah. mind. And it needed somebody who truly loved the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come and teach them how to, uh, how to love the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was one. 
Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadi Yana You know, when uh, uh, people started calling him Qatar, he said something that, that's uh, Khuda Ba'ashq Muhammad Muhammad. I am intoxicated in the love of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the love of Allah. Agar kufur in. Bawad Baghdata, sakht kafir up. If this is what you call kufur, then I have agreed. I'm the worst of the kufar. If this is the love he had, and this is the love he want to instill in the Muslims, then it really shows that he was the Imam Mahdi, whom the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he is coming to revive the love of the Muslims towards the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and towards Islam. Yes, uh, that, that reminds me of the, how Muslims at the era of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, were converting from Islam to Christianity. You shouldn't forget Abdullah Atta. He was called a Padri, I mean a Muslim. Padri, <laughs> Who was called a Madri, you know, these people were there. These were Muslims who knew their Islam, right? But because of the pressure from the West, from Christians, and because they had no one to stand up for the Muslims, all these people, you know, had to accept, okay, yeah, we, we just accept Jesus is our Lord, what, 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 and then they started following them, right? So that was the level at which these scholars, even at that time, who were Muslims, had to go to accept Christianity. But one man stands up and he says, no, where you are going is not the right way. The Islam that you are presenting is not what was preached by the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am calling you to Allah the Almighty. I am calling you back to the Holy Quran. And then he writes this, this excellent book of Brahini Ahmadiyya. And people who were sleeping, Muslim scholars who were sleeping and had nothing to use against the Christians started waking up. Oh, yes, we have Islam. Oh, yes, this man is a good person. Okay, let me read his book. And they started using his arguments to start, you know, challenging the Christians at that time. So it was the Holy Prophet, uh, the Promised Messiah, alayhi yes, salatu was salam, who actually gave life to the Muslims at that time. And that effect did not stand there. That effect actually grew and grew that the number of those who were converting at that time had to reduce drastically. And those who had even left started coming back because they've seen a new life in that Islam. And this is the same thing that the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam saw in a dream, that he gave a part of that book to someone who was dead spiritually, mm -hmm. and that person came back to life. If you want to, you permit me just add one thing. Recently, I went to India just to prove the, the truthfulness of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. And I tell this to a lot of people, that when you go to Kadian, even from Amritsar to Kadian, the road leading there, mm -hmm. you would have to pass through Kodas before you get to Kadian. Before we read there, we ask a lot of people, okay, uh, where are you going? I say, I'm Kadian, Jaren. Kadian, okay. <laughs> Kadian. What is, what is Kadian? No, Kadian is, is the name of a place, you know. They, they don't even know what Kadian is. But someone stands there and says that, that I will cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. From Kadian, the message is here, mm -hmm. and then we are privileged to be even talking about it. Mm -hmm. Can that be, you know, the saying of a liar? It is definitely the words of Al-Hakim, the words of Allah the Almighty, who is wise, Al-Alim. That's Allah the Almighty who knows everything. And so the Prophet Ali Salatu was Salam was a testament, was a living example of who a true prophet is. And whoever speaks against him, I mean, he doesn't know his facts. And most of them, they don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think that's what it comes down to. When people don't know who Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Alayhi Salam is, especially I, I, people who, you know, you go to Twitter sometimes, you go to Instagram, yeah. people build their whole profiles yeah. on the fact that they're champions of, they're experts in Islam and Ahmadiyya. And I've never seen anyone the biggest sheikhs, biggest imams, the, the biggest scholars, who can say that I read each and every one of his books? That's just what I just want to say. That and because everybody studies his books. <laughs> In fact, when some of them are quoting, they quote out of context. Yeah. Yeah. So they can just pick a word yeah. from middle yeah. and just quote it right. without reading what's before that word and what yeah. comes after it. Yeah. So most of them yeah. quote out, out, out of context and they don't really study the books of the yeah. Promised Messiah. Especially with us. So, so they assume yeah. that because his books are in Urdu, mm -hmm. these poor Africans, yeah. look at them. You know, they're giving, them for, for, <laughs> they, they're giving them wrong translation. Someone told me that in, 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 on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, you poor Africans, you don't even know what he wrote. Poor you. If he knew what he wrote, you would run out of that Jamaat. Yeah. I told him, I've read every single one of his books, yeah. cover to cover in Urdu. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you must have learned a little Urdu. I said, no, I read every single one of his books. Yeah. And I believe it. Yeah. You haven't read his books. And you're telling me if you knew what's in the books, you would run away. Yeah. How does that even make sense? And they, they, they marveled. Yeah.
So we're not poor Africans who don't know what he wrote. We've read, we have all read his books. And by the grace of Allah, that's why we accept him. We know what he stood for. One of my, my teachers told me that uh, when he was in Syria, mm -hmm. there was a, this competition of um, Arabic poems. Yeah. And uh, um, one of the students came to him, give me one poem, only one poem. I need yeah. to, go, uh, to go in that um, competition yeah. and present it. This uh, teacher gave him this uh, poem, Ya Aina Faidu. And the, my, the guy said that this poem, I need to know who wrote it. Yeah. Then the teacher was afraid if I tell him, uh, Mr. Bula Muhammad, yeah. they won't accept him to go and read yeah. it. So he yeah. said, this poem was, wrote, was written by Ashik Sadiq. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ashik Sadiq. Then he can read it. <laughs> and, then, and then he went, he went and read it, read it. Yeah. It was the first poem. It took number one Mashallah. position. Mashallah. And when they asked him who was the writer of this poem, he's the author of this poem. Yeah. There is Ashik Sadiq. <laughs> and everybody says, yes, yeah. that person's name is Ashik Sadiq. <laughs> 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 this happened. It, it, it proved the truthfulness of the <laughs> promise. <laughs> 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 I was giving a, 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 a sermon on eight prayers. I was yeah. telling my brother even before yeah. this. And uh, I, I was reading from the book of the Promised Messiah, this book, Khutbat al Hamia. And I was reading the Arabic, translating it in our local language, you know. Yeah. And uh, this guy from Sudan came to me and said, I need that khutbah. I never had this kind of explanations before. Yeah. Yeah. I need it. I don't even wait. I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. I went, brought the book, and showed it where I started from. Yeah. Right. He was interested to know who gave that code. Yeah. Mm. So he opened the book and he showed me the Quran. Muhammad, he looked at me, he wrote this. Yeah. Can you give me this book? Yeah. Mm. This is very new to me. I at least want to go and read this book. Yeah. So this shows that actually people are ignorant about yeah. what he wrote, about yeah. his books. Yeah. They don't know. Actually, if yeah. they start reading his books, if yeah. they start um, seeking for the knowledge of what he wrote in yeah. these books, mm they really realize that he's the president. I think pe people have actually started accepting what he presented, but they just don't want to add the title Mirza Gulam Ahmed Qadiani because they are afraid. If you say that as your teacher was afraid to mention his name, <laughs> right? You see, the effect is there, and that is what we are talking about. This is the man we believe in. We don't believe in someone who just say one or two words and like, okay, he said one or two words yeah. and that's it. We believe in someone whose words were not his own words. They were words from Allah the Almighty. And the words of Allah the Almighty creates such an impact mm -hmm. that even those who disbelieve in him start using them, right. right? They start to accept it. Now, those who raise allegations against Africans, as you rightly mentioned, mm -hmm. at times I get confused because there are two, type of, <laughs> two types of allegations. Sometimes they say, okay, you know, these are African brothers, they are very hungry, so we give them, they give right. them some kind of money so yeah. that they come and say, we are Ahmadi Muslims. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side, they say that, oh, these are pro-Africans, these Ahmadis are taking chanda from them. So which is which? Right. Are we poor or we are rich? What, what is the allegation? So what are you trying to say? Sure. So the fact is that they do not have anything to prove. Yeah. They cannot even stand before us. How much more of the promise Messiah yeah, so and, and, and I like to say, if you tell me, and I've told people this, forget about everything else. If you tell me to leave Ahmadiyat, yeah. leave Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salatu wasalam, yeah. and accept what? And do what? Yeah. Think about that for a moment. If I today, if I said I'm walking away from him, what is there for me? I've read his books. Yeah. I've, like you said, I've read his poems. Yeah. I've seen the Khulafa. I've seen their lives. Yeah. What Ahmadir is doing for me today is spiritually. Yeah. If I leave all of that, abandon all of that, and then do what? Yeah. That's, that's that vacuum, that's that emptiness that no one can answer. Yeah. So, so by the grace of Allah, understanding Islam based on the lens that the Mirza Ghulam Muhammad wasalam, gave to us, anyone, and it's an open challenge, mm -hmm. anyone take any of his books, just start sincerely reading from page one. By the time you get to the third page, mm -hmm. you will see yourself that, wow, this yeah. person, there's yeah. something about him. Yeah. Yeah. Bless her. What I really appreciate, I'm really is somehow fascinated about this community, is the sense of brotherhood we have. Yeah. Anywhere you go in the world, once yeah. you mention you're an, I'm, I'm an Ahmadi Muslim, yeah. you have seen a family. Yeah. You have seen a, a home. Yeah. You don't need to start looking around. In fact, I know of many Ahmadi Muslims, when they travel anywhere in the world, where they first ask of is, where is the Ahmadiyya mosque? Mm -hmm. Because you know you have found your own. Ask those, those people who, go, who are always alleged, alleging against the promised Messiah or who are always opposing the community. Can you ever boast of this? Right. 
Can you ever go to anywhere and mention that I'm a Muslim mm -hmm. and you'll be welcome, you, you'll be accommodated just mm -hmm. like the other Muslims? You can never find it. Mm -hmm. So this shows that this is a divine community mm -hmm. and it's only a divinely commissioned person yeah. who, can, in, who can bring such a, such a transformation mm -hmm. just as it was in the life of the prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I, I, I was once in a refugee camp in Uganda. You know, refugee camp, you meet a lot of people from Congo, from where. And uh, we went there for uh, my duties in, in MTA. And I was asking this guy, is an Ahmadi uh, imam, what uh, actually converted you into Ahmadiyya? What caused you to convert to Ahmadiyya? He told me that there was someone living here, an Ahmadi living here. And it took the Amir. I'm talking about the president of uh, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community in Uganda, mm. travel from Kampala, go down there in that refugee camp. It's in a village, Pipika village, to visit that guy. And he was just sitting down with them. He was talking about brotherhood, sitting down with them. Only that gesture of that uh, Amir mm -hmm. converted me to Ahmadiyya. Wow. I don't need anything else because mm. I have even never seen the leader of the Sunni in my own district. Mm. I have never sat down with him. Mm. If they come, they sit there and we are someone. Mm. But the Amir traveling from Kampala, coming down here, sitting with his uh, community members, that converted me to Ahmadiyya. Sure. You know? sure. And again, that, that's a reflection of learning from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. And whenever we talk about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and for us who have read his books, we've read about his life. It's, it's like word for word, the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Any example we give, of all, everything that his opponents are doing. There's nothing that they're saying against Mirza Ghulam Muhammad alayhi salam that the Kuffar of Makkah didn't say against the Holy Prophet yeah, yeah. The way he lived his life, his childhood being the most trustworthy, the way he stood up talking about Allah against all opposition. Everything that he did, the way he lived his life, the prophecies, the promise that Allah gave him that it would fulfill. When people left him, his own people fought him and a victory came every single step of his life. But if you ask Christians today, why are they so, com why are they so passionate? about you know, speaking against the Holy Prophet ﷺ. He's the most hated person in the history of, the, of, of humanity. Volumes of books have been written by him, about him, against him. So if that doesn't make him a liar, why should we be concerned that because these Maulvis are saying one or two words online, we should be you know, <laughs> moved by that? For them, they probably don't know, or they're just in complete denial. So the open thing is, everyone should just go and read about this man. Who is he? And it's guaranteed. Once you know him, there's no other way, but you have to, you'll fall in love with him. And eventually you fall in love with the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.